two hard-hitting Rams meet Tulane head-on at the polo grounds to drive through to victory and avenge defeat of 1939. Jim Noble receives Fred Cassabri's punt on the 19. He plows down the field. Jim makes for the sidelines like a scared rabbit. The Rams' interference is perfect, and the 162-pound back races 81 yards to a touchdown. And that's the highlight of a top-notch game. In another of the season's upsets, Old Eli takes the worst beating in its history. Penn's ball. Ed Allen heaves a high one. Whiteman intercepts for Eli, and Yale struggles to save a goose egg. Yale comes through with a play to ride home about. Harrison pegs the ball to Bartholomew, who takes it on the 45 and races madly down the home stretch. Johnny Dutcher races up with a threat, but Al lets go a lateral to Bell, who goes over the top for Eli. Now it's Whiteman's turn. He wheels and lets go another aerial, but Bittler spears him and weaves his merry way through the Yale tacklers. It's nip and tuck for 53 yards before he's really nipped. It's a spinner, rainwater to Regan, and another touchdown for Penn's tally sheet. The great Tom Harmon in action. Galloping ghost of 1940 takes the ball around end for a gain and a slide. Again the Wolverines attack. This time Harmon fires to Evashevsky in the end zone and Michigan leads six to nothing. It's Gopher's ball. Bruce Smith starts for the side on a spinner. Cut through left tackle. Starts through the Wolverine line and heads for pay dirt. 80 yards through the mud for a touchdown and a Gopher victory. The Panthers and Carton stage a razzle-dazzle contest. Johnny Ross is carrying the ball, and can he go? It's a first down. Now it's through the line. Ross carrying the pigskin. He fumbles, and Bob Church recovers for Tech. Hits ball, and George Crackham pounds through for a first down. The Cartons are after him, but he reaches Tech 23 before he stops. And here's the only score of the game. Eddie Jones goes around end for a thrilling pit victory. The fighting k hold Ari to a surprisingly low score in a bitter battle of brains and brawn. 80,000 partisans crowd the stands at Yankee Stadium and see Army display amazing power to hold Notre Dame to one touchdown. Now it's Irish turn to fire. Sagaw starts around end like a streak of lightning. Look out there! That was something not on the program. Notre Dame tries a forward. Sagaw heaves a high one, but Mazur intercepts. Still Army's ball. Mazur fires, but Guswick spears it and heads for home. Mazur makes a stab that's almost good. Another block by Bill Gillis, but Steve's on his way to an 80-yard run that scores. Long runs and hot passes feature the Wildcats' clawing attack on the Wolverines. 75,000 fans cheer All-American Tommy Harmon as he slips around in. There he goes, number 98. He's as slippery as an eel. Too bad they call this one back, but the game is young. Northwestern's ball. It's a punt from behind the goal line. It goes to Lockhart, who runs it back all the way to the five-yard stripe. On the one-yard line, West Ball charges through, and is it good? Yes, sir, a touchdown by inches. Wildcats take to the air. Bill the Coravant lets fly a 26-yard heave to Bob Mottel, who sprints down the field for a touchdown. Harmon fakes. West Ball takes the pigskin over again for a 20-13 victory. Traditional rivals again meet in the sports arena. 
Nickel drops back to pass. It's a forward to Captain Joe Gardella. He's on his way. Seymour and Mosley charge in, but Joe leaps over the line. Harvard's ball, and here's another threat. It's complete to Joe Kaufman. Later, with Yale in possession, Seymour punts. Lee's under it for the run back. Harvard blocks take out the Yale men one by one. Down the field he goes like a racehorse. 80 yards to a touchdown. And a great crimson victory that Yale won't forget. All the wild-eyed thrills of football are crammed into this single game at Fenway Park when both teams, as yet undefeated, fight to the limit. Boston's O'Rourke is the center of attraction right now. Watch that Georgetown team work. A triple pass, cost lap to get us to Joe McFadden, and no wonder these lads are unbeaten. Joe goes over and it's a touchdown. Now Boston gets to work. Looks like a baseball game. O'Rourke to Masnicki to Zabilski, and it's good for a first down. Work is back again and shoots a perfect pass to Mznicki, who tears up the side in the direction of the goal line. He makes it, and Boston leads 19 to 16. Fourth down coming up, and here's a bit of clever strategy. With one minute to go, O'Rourke in kick formation runs back over the goal line and wastes valuable seconds dodging Georgetown tackles. Lou Falcon gets him, but O'Rourke saves the game 19 to 18. Navy Blue and Army Gray meet at the 50th anniversary of the traditional contest. And here's one of the great plays of the game. Hat spades for a forward. Glassman intercepts for Navy and the hefty tackle is on his way, but he fumbles and Army recovers. Navy's ball and Clark pounds the line with Mazur and Mesro right after him. Clark again. He fades and lets go to Malcolm. That clinches the day for the Navy, 14 to nothing. And are the middies happy? Here are the official Cornell Dartmouth films of a game that made football history. These films have the answer and prove a referee's mistake that reversed the Cornell claim of victory. Score Dartmouth three, Cornell nothing. One minute to go. Now what? First down on Dartmouth's six-yard line. Landsberg, the Husky fullback, charges through the line for three yards. Cornell is out to maintain its unblemished record. Second down. Joel drives through and is met by a strong defense, but gains two yards on the plunge. Dartmouth fans yell themselves hoarse. Hold that line. Third down. A yard to go. Landsberg again hits the line, but this time no gain. Penalty of five yards for Cornell for excessive timeout. The ball is placed on the six. A few seconds left. Fourth down. Shaw runs to the right. A ball game hangs in the balance. He leaps in the air and fires to Murphy in the end zone. Ray Hall knocks it down. Is it Dartmouth's ball or is it? There's a huddle and shouted protest from Lou Young, but Frizel allows another down. Dartmouth can't believe what's happening. Three seconds left, and here's the unheard of fifth down. Shaw attempts the same play. Over to the right, trying to spot his man. And this time, Murphy grabs it for a touchdown. Cornell seven, Dartmouth three. But these pictures tell the real facts. And 48 hours later, Cornell admits defeat, and headlines tell the story. Music